for your many blessings. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for today that you have allowed us to have. You woke us up this morning. You kept us while we were asleep last night. You didn't let any harm or danger come our way. We appreciate that. We are grateful. We praise you, O oh God. We magnify your name. In the name of Jesus. Lord, be in our midst today. And help us, O oh God. We need your help, Lord. We need you to direct our paths. We need you to be in our midst. Lord, we need your anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your anointing be upon us, dear God. That anointing that breaks every yoke. That anointing that drives the devil out. Yes. And dear God, there are some devils that need to be driven out. Yes. In the name yes. of Jesus, we pray for deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send your deliverance now. Deliver the minds, oh God, the hearts in the name of Jesus. Those hearts that have become hard and stony. Lord, let there be a change. Hallelujah. Let there be a change, oh God. I pray for these young people who are here today. Lord, that they will receive your word and they will get to know you. Bind the hand of Satan that moves against them, that, that won't even destroy their lives. We cast them out now in the name, the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Somebody help us say in the name, in of, the name Jesus. of Jesus. In the name, in of, the name Jesus. of Jesus. Jesus, you Jesus. are our deliverer. Jesus, Jesus. you are our rescuer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, you are our healer. Yes, God. The healer of broken hearts. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wounded spirits. Yes, God. God, heal today. In the name of Jesus. Heal today, Lord. Heal today, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heal, Lord. Heal, Lord. In the name of, Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the spirit of depression now. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The spirit of anxiety. Yes, bind it, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. The spirit of suicide that's yes, in him that bind it now. I catch you out in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, to your way. Yes, yes, to your will. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Somebody tell him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lift those hands and tell him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way here, God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. In this place. Lord. Yes, Lord. In our midst, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let every soul be blessed. Yes, God. Let every person be touched. Yes, Lord. Don't let a person go home the same way. Yes, Lord. God, as we come here, God, we seek your healing. Yes, we seek Lord. your deliverance. In the name of Jesus, heal the sick, God. Those that are sick right now, Lord, you're able to heal. And I pray that you let it be so, God. Even today, dear God, that six bodies be healed and delivered today. In the name of Jesus, God bless us in this time. Uh, the Sunday school hour, Lord. Let the word be taught that we may gain a better understanding of your will and your word. Lord, in all that we need, yes. we thank you, God, thank you, Jesus. and we bless your name now, yes, in Jesus' name, yes, amen and amen. amen. Sunday school. If you would like to take this opportunity to share the Sunday school, you can go on our you can go on our page and share the Sunday school with someone. If I desire that we can get the saints back to Sunday school. That was a time we had 35 or more in Sunday school. Now we have we do have them in, in the children, but the adults the adults, we need to get them back to Sunday school. So let's be God's hands and let's be his feet. And let's invite the saints back to Sunday school. All right. We have a great lesson this morning. I don't remember um, uh, 
a Sunday school lesson taking this um, slant, if you allow me to, to uh, say that, or with this theme, uh, the creation of woman. Yes. The creation of woman. This is the first of its kind that I can remember. I don't know about anybody else, yeah. but this is the first time I ever remember uh, a Sunday school subject or a theme being the creation of woman. We've had, you know, the creation probably before, but this one is zeroing in on the creation of woman. So you need to call somebody, you need to text somebody. Let them know that it's time for Sunday school and it's time for us to, um, time for us to get to Sunday school because we have a great lesson this morning. We have a great lesson this morning. See if I can send it through remind to these people who are not coming to Sunday school. See if we can invite our church members to Sunday school. All right. Yes, share that link with somebody. All right. So. Uh, if you do not have a book, we have new books now. If you do not have a book, we're looking, we're coming from Genesis 2, chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. And this is a very familiar passage, but um, the subject is, is quite unique. The subject is quite unique. And so um, let's go to our lesson aim. Today's aim, the facts. To discover what God did and purpose when he created mankind. The principle to bring our thinking and actions into conformity with God's established ways for mankind. To bring our thinking and actions into conformity with God's established ways for mankind. So we need to bring our thinking and our action into conformity, sister and to conformity with God's established ways. Listen, God has an established way. Now we live in America and you know, we, we taught our freedoms. We talk about how free we are and how we're free to speak and say what we want to. We're free to live like we want to. We brag about our freedoms, but we need to align our freedoms with God's established way of for mankind, with God established ways, God has established particular ways for mankind. So when your freedom is not in line with God's ways, then you are in error. When our freedoms are not in line with God's ways, we are in error. So we as Americans, we need to, um, we need to understand that God has a standard for us. You know, we talk about how uh, what happened July, you know, July 4th, many, many years ago, we talk about the war and how we fought for our own rights and how we fought for our freedoms. But we need to understand that the almighty God has a ways established for us, for mankind, and we need to live by those established laws and those established ways. And then the application, it says, to learn to embrace God's relationship patterns. Uh-oh to learn to embrace God's relationship patterns so that we can experience his blessings in life. So God has relationship patterns. Isn't that something? Yeah. We can't just do what we want to do even in relationships. Amen. God has established relationship patterns in life. And if we want to be blessed, we have to follow his relationship patterns. All right, do we have any... Um, comments on the introductory part of our lesson, the, um, the, the facts, the principle, the application. Do we have any comments on the introductory part of our lesson? The creation of woman. All right, let's go to our introduction. John J. Davis wrote, evolution as represented in Darwinism and Neo-Darwinism simply asserts that all living organisms arose from one simple living cell. The origin of that cell is traced to the accumulation of chemical and protein elements brought together over a long period of time by unknown chance factors. The concept of spontaneous generation 
which is widely accepted and on which evolutionary theory is based, is an, is an a priori assumption that lacks controlled scientific proof. Since Christians are often under pressure to balance scientific explanations of origin with belief in God and creation, many have accepted what, ha what is referred to as theistic evolution. This theory states that while God might have directed, directly created the original life forms, he followed that by ordering and directing the evolutionary process through the laws of nature he had, he had established. It might be tempting to accept such a compromise, but that explanation does not accord with the Bible's description of the creation of man. Scripture clearly attributes the origin of both Adam and Eve to direct creative acts of God. Amen. So, you know, we study science and we do not, uh, we do not uh, disbelieve all scientific facts, but when scientific facts come in um, contradiction to God's word, Amen. God's word is our priority. I'll never forget when I was uh, studying uh, counseling at Delta State, um, and um, they they talked about the, my professor talked about the code of ethics, and he 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 uh, claimed to be a Christian. He was he was a very very nice man. He was one of the nicest professors I have ever met, and um, he said he was a Christian, and so. We talked about the code of ethics and the priority that the code of ethics takes in counseling. And so he said, this is our authority in counseling. And so we would come to something in class later and um, he asked me a question about, you know, how would I handle a certain counseling uh, situation? And when I began to explain to him that the Bible is my authority, God's word is my authority, and that it supersedes the code of ethics for counseling. So I guess that's where we as quote unquote Christians disagree because he felt like the code of ethics at to counselors was the, the, the thing that superseded everything. But we understand that even it makes no difference what man can write, God created man. So there is nothing man can write, nothing man can study, nothing man can say that can supersede God's word. Who created the God who created us. And so that's why it is so important for us to have these types of lessons. Because it seems that our culture has gotten so far away from God. It seems that our culture, our, our government has gotten so far away from God. And we are man as a whole. We think that we are so smart and we are so um, intelligent that we can come up with things on our own and we can explain things on our own but we must always remember that God supersedes anything the almighty God supersedes every every being he is the creator of all being and his word supersedes anything that man can write his inspired word that word that is inspired by the holy men of God all right comments any comments thus far? You know, it's good to ride out of this, this is what you were saying. And, um, it's good to have scientific facts in its place. But when it comes to the creation, God created man. He created the world. He created human. He created the animal. He did all of that. There's no such thing as evolution. <laughs> we have not arrived from apes. Well, we was bent over and, and with long arms, and, and then we, uh, as time, years passed by, we became upright, and then we moved upright like a man, and then we took on the form of eight, and all of a sudden we turned into man. No such thing. What did we? What did they come with that? That that uh theory. Theory. Trying to find a word for it. When did they come with that theory? You know, that God is the creator. But they are teaching evolution. They're teaching that. 
So we need to know who created us, where we come from. We come from God. Amen. Amen. Someone like to add to that. Thank God for those comments. But someone like to add. Amen. So uh, I thank God for all of the comments that have been made thus far. And so, you know, it, it, when I think about, you know, I thought about how you say chemical evolution and how we evolved from chemicals or how we evolved from the eight. Uh, or, you know, even when you think about that, I'm a logical person. When you think about that logically, to think that we came from apes, how is it that we, our intelligence, is that above every eight? Exactly. I mean, how, are you telling me we just evolved and that intelligence just evolved to that that is uh, above every eight? Or even when you talk about the chemicals, I think about the human body as the computer that it is. You talk about how man came up with the computer, but the human body is the most beautiful computer ever created. And you're not gonna tell me that it just just so happened to evolve into this, that it just so happened to, to, to uh, come from chemicals. It took a, an intelligent creator to create the human body the way it is, to, com co to create man the way he created him, to create woman the way he created him. To, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I'm not a, a medical professional, but when you think about, you know, when we, they tell us that something is going wrong in our body, we begin to research the different things and to think about how beautifully and wonderfully we were created, even as the song declared how, you know, how we were, how beautifully and wonderfully we were made. There is an intelligent creator who created us the way he did. There is an intelligent creator who created man, who created woman. To even to complement one another as we'll get down into to our lesson a little bit more. It look, it's enough for me when I read the creation story. I don't have to come up with anything other than the creation story to explain our existence. I believe unequivocally the creation story. Amen. Now man can come up with all kinds of reasons, and like you say, how do you tell me that these things are proof of creation? when they don't even make sense. Amen. 
So, uh, yes, we're studying the creation story this morning, and specifically the creation of woman. Anybody else want to say something before we delve into our first outline? were created for us, yeah. for our comprehension, for our understanding. And, it, and it, it's a lot of times I sit back and I even just look at creation. The Bible talk, tells us that creation even teaches us that there is a God. So um, it, it amazes me how man thinks that we are so intelligent and but yet we try to deny the, the creator and our foolishness. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. So the Bible calls us a fool if we don't believe that there is a God. All right? So let's look at our first outline, Adam by himself. Adam by himself. That's Genesis 2, verses 18 through 20. If you are joining us by way of Facebook, you can leave your comment, and we will uh, talk about your comment. If you're joining us by way of Zoom, you can leave, you can unmute or you can uh, put a comment in the chat and we will discuss yours as well. All right, our first outline, Genesis 2, 18 through 20, and it reads, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living, living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help me for him. All right, let's have some comments on these uh, scriptures. Adam by himself. <laughs> I know we got some comments now. All the back now. Hey, Dave. Now, you may not need one, but my husband dead and gone. 
Yes, I was, I was free to marry again, and Absolutely. I, I would love to have a companionship. Amen. You know what I'm Amen. saying? Because God saw that Alva. Yes, he did. He needed a man. So I, I, I have a problem with that. Can we somebody explain it? <laughs> All right, can somebody explain that to Sister Minnie? I don't have, I don't get it, so I, I don't have it. I understand you, you know. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I think that, you know, Paul said, I, I have learned whatsoever state I am there with, to be content. So maybe, I'm just hoping that maybe they mean, you know, I've learned to be content. However, Sister Minnie, um, when a person desires a companion, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. God made us that way. And we see here in the creation story that when he created Adam, it was not good that Adam was alone. So he has made us in such a way that we desire companionship. That's why we understand that when people just want to uh, always now, I'm not saying you don't ever want to be alone because sometimes we need some solitude. We need to be alone by ourselves. But that person who never desires human companionship, there is something wrong. God has made us to desire each other's company, to desire uh, human companionship. I understand that there are people who desire companionship more than others. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about to that person who never desires human companionship, then there's something wrong because God has created us in such a way. There has even been a study where babies, they took these babies who, who were at a, an orphanage and who did not have that, uh, that, the physical touch of, of, um, of the parents. You know that a child who was born, and, and, and they even talk about how a child, when they are first born, how they need that, that mother's uh, nurturing, how they need that mother's care, how they need that, that, that holding and hugging from the mother. A lot of times people get at newborn, new mothers and they say, you're going to spoil that child. You don't need to hold that child. And, and, and you know what, if that's, if that's your philosophy, that's fine, but it's okay for a mother to hold her child because that's the bonding period. But when it comes to male and female, yes, Sister Minnie, it is nothing wrong with us desiring to have a companion. Nothing wrong with that. The world would try to shame you out of it. But no, God created us in such a way. As a matter of fact, God, like I, I like what Sister Knight and Jones said, God, everything that God had made, he said it is good. But God himself looked at Adam and said it is not good that man should be alone. So he made, he, he, he began to, I noticed that when he made that statement, then he would create uh, the beasts of the field and the fowl of the air, and he brought them to Adam, and Adam began to name them. I noticed how he made male and female from the beginning. Now, people in their ignorance, and I have to say their ignorance, now claim to have 23 different sexes. <laughs> At least. Yeah. God created them male and female. And that's the only two sexes we have, male, male and female. And you know what? A lot of times you see where these people try to change their sex. And you and you know the America tries to make it look so good and how happy Bob Bobby is when he becomes Betty. And how happy uh, uh Shirley is when she becomes uh, Sam. But listen, there have been some people who have told their story after they have gone through those sex changes and they talked about how they have to fill their body with hormones and uh, the horror that comes along with it and how many times the medical field is now pushing that on to adults. They're pushing it onto them because of money. The Bible says the love of money, that's the root of all evil. And now, oh my God, when they can't push it on adults, they push it on our children. Yes, they do it to our children. They are now trying to say that they can change a child's sex without the consent of their parent. God forbid. Amen. Every medical professional who does such a thing will have to answer to God. We think we're so big and bad. You know, they say that many uh, doctors have a God complex anyway. But if you think that you can take these matters into your own hands 
and, and play with God's creation, every one of us must answer to God for the deeds done in our body, whether they be good or bad. So I believe that the medical profession will also have to answer to God for the foolishness they have come up with. I think I was studying here not long ago um, the first sex change operation, and it talked about the crooked and evil things that went on even to do that. I, I think there was these twins and they were trying to make one of them a female. Oh, I gotta send, I'm gonna send it out through Remind. Y'all have got to read this story. And it talked about this man came, and all these years later would come and tell the horrific thing that this doctor did to them. The man was a pedophile. And many times we're dealing with pedophile, those people who prey upon children. And this, he talked about all the horrific things that this man did to him and his brother when they were little children. Listen, let me tell y'all something. Those of us who have children and grandchildren, you can't just take your hands off and leave your children and grandchildren in the hands of just anybody. Amen. I don't care how many degrees they got. I don't care what, anytime they telling me I got to sit outside and I can't be in there with my child or my grandchild, I'm going to tell you right now, I am going to have a problem with it. Amen. Because how can you take a child away from the parents, away from the safety of the parents, and then you say, oh, the parents don't have to come. I, I'll never forget if you all have seen that Disney, um, that Disney documentary, how that they said they didn't want parents in there on the set. They didn't want the parents in there on the set. And one parent who talked about how when she had a problem with some of the things they were doing with the children, how, you know, they, they fired her son. And she said, to this day, my son and my relationship is fractured. Because I, I, I spoke up and did not let them have their way with my, children, with my child. Listen, we, God has put these children, they are our assignment. And we are going to have to answer God for how we have uh, handled this assignment. Our children, our, the assignment of our children. So listen, God created male and female. We've got to protect our children from all of this foolishness that is in this world. That's trying to teach our children. I thank God for teachers like um, um, Ms. Knighton Jones, Sister Knighton Jones, who, who's there to tell us, yes, this is what scientists say, but you need to understand that there's another way, but they don't want us to talk about the Bible in school. And it's a shame before God. But the Bible goes on to say that Adam named, think of how intelligent Adam had to be to come up with a name for every beast of the field, every bird, Every, uh, every, you know, just have a name for every living creature. I like what the commentator said. He said Adam was the first biologist and botanist. Yeah. He was able to name every living thing, even the plants. He was able to name them. So um, uh, I love what, what we see here. But even after all of that, y'all, after having the company of every animal, after having every plant at his fingertips, Adam was not complete. So God said, it is not good that man should be alone. So God created him a help me. And we've had a little trouble here with um, Sister Lee. Did you end it? Okay. So I'm trying to get that back up. So he created a help me for Adam. Comments. Any more comments while I try to get this back on? All right. No more comments. Um, there is so much that was written. Uh, I, okay. Let me cut this out. There is so much that the commentator said huh? there's so much that the commentator said that was uh, so profound like Sister Knight Jones said um, earlier Matthew Henry wrote Matthew Henry wrote the woman was made of a rib out of the side of man not made out of his head to rule over him nor out of his feet to trample up to be trampled upon by him, but out of his side to be equal with him, under his arm to be protected, 
and near his heart to be loved. All right, so um, I, I, I see another comment that said, in God's plan, the woman was absolutely necessary. Many, while many cultures are uh, today devalue women and treat them as owned objects or worse, in God's eyes, they have always been valuable and loved and deserving of consideration and respect from the opposite sex. Did y'all hear that? We must understand the value of women and not let our culture, we look at how our culture handles women today and we think about the fact that um, many times when we look at the, the music industry and so many of these other things, how they create, how they uh, display women, we're looked at, we're used as sex objects, we're used as all kinds of things. Sex trafficking now is at its absolute height, worse than it's ever been. But God respected woman, the woman, and he made her as to be respected from the opposite sex. So we need to understand it makes no difference how many cultures devalue women. We talk about some of the cultures of, uh, of, of the Middle East and other areas how they devalue women, how women cannot have anything to say or women have, are treated as second class or third class citizen. That is not God's way. God created the woman for the man and he created her to be respected and to be loved by man. All right, someone else. All right, Adam with companion. That's Genesis chapter two. Verses 21 through 25, and it reads, And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Comments. Adam with a companion. Let's have some comments here. Child being naked because they're cruel. They don't even have a sense that they are naked. Mm -hmm. but, uh, 
the thing about this, I look at this with the bride about um, how God had put Adam into a deep sleep. You know, sometimes people was scientifically speaking, they say when we are asleep, we are temporarily dead because we don't even know what, that's what scientists say. We don't know what's going on, but we are temporarily dead. But he put him in a, put Adam in a deep sleep. And you, you see how uh, the connection here is, woman is so connected with man until God could have made woman without the rib of a man. Have you ever thought about that? Absolutely. He could have made woman without the rib of a man, but we find out that uh, woman is so connected to man that he took the rib, and we got 12 ribs on each side, right? Is that it? How many ribs we got for? If they get 12 on each side, it's 24. And that's with male and female, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. We got 24 ribs. Okay, if he took a rib from out of Adam's side, well, that made Adam had 23 ribs after that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm scientifically speaking. It's just that they want to go so scientifically on here. So, but anyway, it was, we got 24 ribs. And he took that rib and put it into woman. Is that the connection that we need man? We need man so Now, if you want to be alone, well, yeah, some people choose to be like that. I'm not knocking that. That's you. What God say, it's not good for man to be alone. But I'm looking at that rib that he took as a connection for male and female. We're so connected together that we need one another. We definitely need one another. Because so we connected like that. He took the rib. So, um, and then when he formed woman, you know, I'm looking, I'm, I'm trying to imagine this in my mind. When he, when he made that woman, what, what do you do after he made? He presented the woman to a uh, man. Yes. Took her and said, here she is. And married them. And you know, I believe Eve was a beautiful woman. I just believe it. I believe Eve had the long, flowing hair. <laughs> The curve is shaped. Now, I'm just, I mean, we're talking about this. Everybody's done here, but if he presented this woman before man, can you imagine why Adam looked? And then he said, Well, I'm going to name her woman. Go on. I, I can go on with this one. I see. <laughs> All right, we thank God for those comments. Anyone else? 